All right, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we ask that you would turn to Psalm, the 89th Psalm, Psalm 89. And uh, while you're turning there, uh, again, always remember me as your pastor. Uh, not the easiest job I've ever had, uh, but the Lord is always good. Psalms 89, beginning in the first verse. The Bible says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations, Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. And to, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong God like unto thee, thou art to thy faithfulness round about thee. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof rage, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces, as one that is slain, Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, for the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Herod shall be in thy name. Thou hast, made a, thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for all your goodness and watch care. We thank you for your faithfulness, even when we don't deserve it. God, we pray this morning that you would bless and honor your word. I know that you're able. And we pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, maybe some not so familiar verses. Uh, I'll be preaching, preaching this morning on the faithfulness of our God. Now, uh, very few ever think about how faithful God has been to you, but let me assure you, He's been more faithful to you than anybody else you know. He's been faithful. Uh, he's been true. Now, uh, we began uh, back in the first verse, uh, the psalmist, and it is not David, uh, the, uh, it says, Meshil of Ethan, uh, the Ezraite. Now, I had to look up uh, because I thought simply that was a descendant of Ezra, but it is not. Uh, and when you think about Ezra's ministry, this kind of makes sense. Ezra in the Jewish language simply means faithful. It means that you are faithful to the Lord. Now, let me say this. Your faithfulness will never compare unto the Lord, but that should be your goal. Uh, when we come down to the house of the Lord, we should be faithful with our desire to get here. Not out of obligation, right. but out of the love that you possess for the Lord God Almighty. That is being faithful. That is being true. Week after week, month after month, year after year, down at the house of the Lord... For your effort in faithfulness, yeah. your thoughts, your ideas, they ought to be faithful unto the Lord. And again, uh, we're very miserably, uh, uh, often very miserable in our attempt to do this, but that ought to be our goal. Now, with that said, let me say this, God is ever faithful. He is ever faithful. He will never let his people down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. 
Now, what a wonderful thought that is. And, and you think about the mercies of the Lord. Uh, mercy is almost as good as grace. <laughs> mercy that you were even able to get out of bed this morning of your own ability. That's the mercy of God. Uh, that you had something to eat this morning before you came down to the house of God. That's the mercy of God. That you even had a house of God to go into. That's the mercy of God. Day by day, year by year, minute by minute, uh, God's people are followed by his mercy. It's our hallmark. It's how we ought to be known. The rest of that verse says, With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Uh, generations, you know, uh, tell your children and your children's children how good God has been to you. How he spared your life time and time again. How that he saved your never dying soul out of his mercy and his grace. You let them know about it of his faithfulness. Now, mankind will let you down, but God will never let you down. Uh, and, and so I want you to see that that faithfulness we experience should be passed on to the next generation. And you know what? Uh, by and large, and not necessarily our group, but by and large, that's not happening anymore. Uh, if you have success, it's on your own merit, not on the merit of God. And you know what? That leaves God's faithfulness to us. Uh, God's faithfulness belongs to Him. You know, you know why I'm not hungry this morning? Because of God's faithfulness. Uh, you, know, uh, you, you know why we even were able to pay the light bill this month? Because of God's faithfulness. He is always, always faithful. And I want my children to know, and I want my grandchildren to know how faithful and good God has been to me. Once, uh, time upon time upon time, when there was no other way, God stepped in. That's what we should sing about. Verse 2, for I have said mercy shall be built up forever. Now, what exactly does that mean if it's built up? Uh, the only thing that you can do to build something up is to keep it, right? If you want to lay aside a store of vegetables... You have to get them and keep them. Now, what we ought to do and how that works with mercy is every time you recognize God's mercy in your life, if you can't remember like me, write it down. If you can remember good, store it away some up here. And when you get someone, when you get the opportunity to say, you know what, I've been there, and this is what God did for me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I've told you all many times, they, uh, when I had my second surgery on my abdomen, they worked 12 hours, and all my mom heard the whole time, they said that they, she said they come out and said, Miss Lafferty, we've moved him from the critical list to the very critical. And you know what? Here I am 53 years later. That, that's a story of the faithfulness of God. Man. <laughs> And so we see all those should be chugged away somewhere up here or write them down so after you're gone, you're, after you're gone, your great-grandchildren could read up them. That's the faithfulness of God. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. Now you think about that. You know what? Sometimes it's cloudy. But the sun comes up every day. It's in the heavens. Uh, sometimes it's cloudy, but you know what? Uh, Sarah and I uh, came home from church on uh, Friday night and looked up, and the magnificence of the heavens was unreal. Uh, star after star, just unbelievable. You know, all my fleshly life, that's always happened. That's a faithfulness. And you know what? It's supposed to be clear tonight, and I fully believe those, those stars will pop out again because God's been faithful. Right. And we can anticipate that. Uh, you can't depend on man that way, but you certainly can depend on God that way. He's been faithful. Verse 5, 
I have made a covenant, and this is the Lord God speaking, I have made a covenant with my chosen, I have sworn unto David my servant. Now, covenant theology, I kind of I kind of walk around that because it's been so uh, trashed in the last 20 years. But covenants with God is a very real thing. And he made a covenant with Israel that he would be their God and they would be his people. And you know what? Since it issued from God and didn't issue from man, it'll happen. A covenant is an everlasting agreement. It's something that can't be ended. And you know what? You see in the modern world today, covenants broken every day. Uh, the way I look at it, me and Donna made a covenant soon be 34 years ago, and I'm still held to that obligation. I am still obligated to fulfill my duty as a husband. <coughs> now, Mom and Dad, you know what? They took the very same vows we did. You know what? Dad broke it. He left. He was done. That's the kind of covenants that we make, is it not? But you know what? God doesn't operate that way. No. God operates with a fulfilling, ever, uh, everlasting desire. That's the faithfulness of God. You know what? Lord willing, and, and, and through the power of grace tomorrow, I'll get up and I'll go to work because I've committed to those people that I will be an RN for them, right? But you know, one day, I don't know, probably a month and a half ago, I was so sick when I got up, I still went, I didn't feel like going, and I was so sick when I got there, they sent me home. Uh, I've often wondered since I looked back on that, who broke the covenant, them or me, right? See, the flesh doesn't have the ability to keep it, does it? But God does. If God says he'll do it, he'll do it. If God commits himself, he, he is very, very, very faithful to all that he has promised to do. Thy seed will I establish forever. Now, uh, I personally don't think he's talking about the nation of Israel. I believe his seed includes us. It's the wild branch that was uh, that was grafted in, so we're included in that promise. And that's why salvation is eternal. That covenant, that, that faithfulness comes from him, not from us. That's why I can go to bed at night, and if the house burns up around me, I'm at home to be with the Lord because my God's been faithful. Not in just carnal things, but in spiritual things, he's been faithful. And certainly that should be our view of things when the world is turned up on his edge, say, listen, God's been faithful. He's been true to me time and time and time again. Verse 6, who in heaven can be compared to the Lord? And very easy answer, no one. Now, uh, me and Sarah was laughing about that beautiful sky, and we're talking about people that can see all this stuff in the heavens. And some, every once in a while, I see the, the Little Dipper, and that's been my, my astrology that I've accomplished in my life. And they say they can see all kinds of people and stuff like that. You know, even if they can, and me and Sarah have our doubts about it, but even if they can see it, does it compare to God, does it? Anything in heaven has no power, no strength compared to the Almighty. Yeah. That's a, in Him to be our individual God, that we know Him personally. Uh, what a faithful God. Uh, why do we stress and worry? Why do we, why, why we hum hum around when we serve a faithful God time and time and time Again, verse 6, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. Uh, I don't see that much anymore, do you? Uh, the fear of God is, is about gone. Uh, I still fear Him. I don't know that I fear Him the way I should, but I still fear Him because you know what? 
if nothing less, get down to our selfishness and remember this, fear it this way, he's the giver and the taker of life. That'll make you fearful. That when, when you think, well, I may die before I wake tomorrow, and if it is, it's, it's, on the, it's on the plan of God, that ought to make us a little fearful, and thereby we, should wor we ought to be able to worship him more. Uh, verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, no one, no one has the strength and the ability of our God. Who but God could step out of nothing and say, let there be light? Who but God could step out of nothing and say, let, let the dry land appear? Who but God could say, let us make man in our own image? Only God. Only the God that we came here down this morning supposedly to worship, high, highly above, above and exalted, who can compare to him? Who could create that kind of fear? Yeah, you ever looked at the basis of your fears? I think every one of us, at least to some extent, have a fear of dying. I've often said, I don't fear dying, but sometimes I fear how I'm going to get there. Uh, but, is that doubting the ability of God? <coughs> he spoke it. He, he, he told us many, many centuries ago in the, in, in the fleshly death of Adam, <laughs> that death is coming. So should we fear that? If he authored it, it has to be good. If he created it, then it's for our benefit, even in death. And so, who could we compare it like that? No one. Who controls life and death? No one but the Almighty. And that is where we should abide. And if we abide there, we, we will be strong. Then it says the rest of verse 8. Or to thy faithfulness around about thee. And so he, uh, I believe the psalmist recommends, who is, he says, who is like the, how, the faithfulness, who is like unto those that give us faithfulness around thee? <coughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> He's faithful. He is very, very faithful. The sun will come up in the morning. He's faithful to that. To the day that he says it's enough, that'll keep on happening. He's faithful. Uh, a good breath of fresh air. He's faithful. Ever been short of breath? Uh, when I was in nursing school, uh, we found this out. We could sit down. We couldn't say someone had pneumonia because that's a medical diagnosis. But we could say someone is short of breath. That, you know, <coughs> then, you know, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out, oh man, that, that dude's short of breath. And I always wrote that down as a, nur a nursing diagnosis and what I was going to do about it as a nurse, blah, blah, blah. But until you experience it, it's very different. This last time I had pneumonia, I would walk from the front room to our kitchen, and by the time I got to the kitchen, I was on the island going, you know what, that's scary. But my God is faithful. It may have been a rough one, but you know what I had? A rough breath. Some people would be very glad to have one. Mm -hmm. And so my God has been faithful time and time and time again, even when I may perceive that the faithfulness has fallen. No, no, no. He's always been faithful to me. And certainly that should be our strive to be to him. Verse 9, Thou rulest the raging of the sea. Uh, you know, in... In my lifetime, at least, it seems like there's more hurricanes than when I was a boy. 
and you know they give them names and there's a, a way they do that like the Atlantic has something and the and the Pacific has something and they switch the male to female names and they they write them all down and you know what that's just an effort to try to make sense of what our God does you know what I don't care how they track them they still happen and they still come more severe don't they uh, it's not for you to understand all things. No. Even in the most chaotic time of your life, let me assure you, God had a plan and He's been faithful to it. And we go through a lot of things, do we not? I don't understand it. I don't understand uh, why people, <laughs> why the doctor comes in and says, yes, you're eat up with cancer and sadly walks away. But I know my God's been faithful. And so we, as the Lord's people, when, when we see all these distresses coming about, the situation in the Ukraine and in Poland and the nation of Russia, just remember this, that he rules those raging waves. He lets the wave land exactly, not where it wants to, but where he wants it to. That's the God that we serve. Very faithful, wonderful God. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces. Now that is not Rahab the harlot. That is Rahab a city. And this city was destroyed by the hand of the Almighty. Now, listen, having been there and seen the culture in the Ukraine, I don't know, understand why it's being attacked. And you know what? Russia may come back and, and rule them again. And what I knew when I visited the nation of the Ukraine may be forever more gone because Rahab was. And you know what? That's the divine hand of God. Being what? Mean? Forgetful? No, no, that's God being faithful. You know what? God has a plan, and he's going to be faithful to it. Amen. And if that's the destruction of the United States, he'll destroy her and wipe it off the map because he's faithful. He, he's faithful to his agenda. And, and when, when all chaos is breaking loose, if you'll remember that, you'll combine peace and harmony because... You know that our God is faithful. Verse 11, the heavens are thine, the place where storms come from, the place where beauty is at, the place where everything exists, the heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. So severe earthquakes, they belong unto God. Hurricanes, they belong unto the Almighty. Uh, when the sea rises up, that's at the... That, that's at the very lifted hand of the Almighty. He's faithful. Yeah. He's very, very faithful, even when the world would have you to believe that he's not. Uh, Y'all remember that old saying, the devil made me do it? <laughs> That's a lie right out of the pits of hell. You know who made you do it? You did. <laughs> uh, don't give the devil too much credit. When, when a house collapsed, don't give him the credit. The only time I've ever seen that happen in Scripture is when he said, have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. and, and even when he said that, he said, Satan, you can go this far, but you ain't going any further. Uh, and, and when you see that, that's the faithfulness of God. Yes, it's hard sometimes. Yes, it's difficult sometimes. But our God is a very, very, very faithful God. <coughs> Verse 12. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon, or Hermon, shall rejoice in thy name. Now, why... Why is that significant? First of all, again, those are not two individuals. They're two nations. Nations that were heathen. Nations that were Gentile. Nations that 
didn't even know of the love of God. He says, they're going to they're gonna rejoice in me. And you know why he could make that statement? Because he's faithful. If he promised it to himself, hey, it's going to happen. He's a faithful God. He's a good God. He's never, ever... De the devil will con try to convince you of this, but he has never, ever let you down. That's an amazing thing, is it not? That... And, that an entity has never let you down. Now, people will let you down. They're going to disappoint you. But God never will. He's been faithful. He's faithful to His own agenda. He's faithful to His plan. And so even when the news is bad, our God is being faithful. Verse 13. Thou, meaning the Almighty, thou has a mighty arm, Strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Now, three, three, uh, three statements really here. Thou has a mighty arm. You ever, you ever just cried out to God because you didn't have anything left else to do? You know what God is? He's a deliverer. He is someone that gets the job done. Call out to him. He's faithful. He's a deliverer. He says, a strong arm, mighty arm, a strong hand. Now, that seems like it's saying the same thing. But as Brother Junior could tell you very easily, there's things that this will do, and there's things this will do. If I want to pick something up, I need my hand, do I not? I need, I need to be individual. I, I need to be able to be specific. That's the God we serve. He has the strength and He has the individual ability to touch hearts, to remove burdens, to react in an individual's life. He's faithful. So the next time you think, well, the devil, the devil's about to, uh, about fully taking care, uh, taking control of the situation. Remember, our God is faithful. Don't stress out. Uh, are we going to call out to Him? You bet. But He is faithful. I, I, I don't understand God's plan much of the time, but. I, I rely on this and understand and know that he is very, very <coughs> faithful. Now go with me to Romans chapter 8, and we'll see some of these promises as they're moved into the New Testament. Uh, Romans chapter 8, and we'll begin reading in verse 28. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, the Bible says this, for he will finish the work. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful promise? It's not the hinge, hinge depended on us, but God is going to finish it. He, uh, I'm sorry, I read the wrong verse. Uh, back 8, 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Every little item in your life, everything that's ever transpired, it was good. It was authored by God, and it was good to them who are called according to His purpose. You know what God is? Being faithful, He's faithful to His purpose. He, he's going to work out His own plan in His own time because He's faithful. He, he's going to accomplish his work because that's who he is. Verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, Brother Jarrett was teaching about separation, and maybe he was right on point, was he not? But why? Why is that even a teaching 
of the scripture. You ever thought about that? <laughs> well, first of all, we don't have to have a why. <laughs> He said so, and we're to do it, yeah. right? But you know what? The, uh, if there is a why, you know what I think it's about? Obedience. He teaches us obedience. If we dress and act like Julie pointed out like we should, when he gives you a bigger assignment, like go to the back side, <laughs> of Egypt and you preach the gospel, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be easier because you've, you've honored him in the small things. You've been obedient in the little things. And, and so when, when the agenda, when the item becomes huge and the agenda is much, much more life impacting, certainly you'll be faithful to it. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the Firstborn among 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 many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. What did Peter say? Make your calling and election sure. The calling of God is a hinge pin. Um, it is what separates those that are going through a fake and those that are real. Do you have a calling of God? No, no. Uh, calling to redemption, it may, it's the very same thing. It may be experienced different, but the call to redemption is the same. But, Brother Jared, I'm sure, and I can say, and I know you could too, your call to the ministry was quite different. There, 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 <laughs> He calls his own, always. He's faithful to that. He, he's never stopped that. Uh, and so we as the Lord's people, we ought to rejoice in how faithful he was. He made a commitment to save everyone that was his. And you know what? He's faithful to that. Don't stress out. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren. Lay them out before God because you know what? God's faithful. I fully believe that. He will accomplish it. And so we find that that spills over his faithfulness into the people of God. Uh, back to the Old Testament. This is what stresses mo most people out. So I always uh, try to to cover it. First Kings. First Kings. Chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. Beginning in verse 13. First Kings chapter 17. Beginning in verse 13. The Bible says this. And Elijah said unto her. Meaning uh, the... The, the woman that was to provide his name, uh, his needs, the woman of Zarephath. <clears throat> and Elijah said unto her, fear not. So what's the first interruption in faith? Fear. Yeah. Now the fear of God will seal it, and the fear of the world will destroy it. Now, there's not a one of us under the sound of my voice that said, man, I really like being hungry. That, that's a blessing. I enjoy that a lot. We like this little thing filled up, do we not? And when it's threatened, we get upset. Isn't it a wonderful thing in the midst of a seven-year <coughs> drought? God said, I'm going to be faithful. Fear welled up. You know the story of this little widow. She was going to go get two sticks, make a little bitty fire, fix up one last cake for herself and her son, and then the plan was to starve to death. That, that's the level of mankind's faithfulness, is it not? But God exceeds that much, much more. He, he, he is high and lifted up. And, and so... Elijah, knowing what God's plan was, 
And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, deal with your fears first, and then move to faith. Go and do as thou said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after <laughs> and after make thee make thee make for thee and for thy son. Now, how would you like uh, for me to show up and <laughs> y'all have uh, enough for you and your wife uh, and you know uh, I understand this and we've kind of adjusted now and then when the girls get grown I don't know uh, when we had six or seven children at home Donna would fix huge amount and it took a while to adjust to having three or four of us at home and we always had extra. Now she's kind of got it all fixed out. She fixes for five. About the time we get her spread out, here comes Adam and Sarah and their gang and Junior and Diane and Eric. What are you going to do? It, cut it up in smaller pieces. <laughs> That's kind of where she was at. <laughs> and he said, you give to me first. You fix me the biggest plate and God will provide. You know what? That took a lot of faith on that little woman, didn't it? Here comes the preacher, wants something to eat. And he did it first. She did it first. She, she went with God's plan opposed to her own plan. And you know what? That's a great illustration of her being trust in God. It was very much going with God's plan opposed to her plan showed her faith showed that she believed God more than the reality that she was living. And we know that the, God, that the Lord God blessed it. And all the days, the barrel never ran empty. The little cruise always had a little bit left in it. And she ran from the empty barrel for years. And that's our God. He's faithful. You know, I don't think the barrel ever came to the top level. I don't believe it was anything that she could see. Oh man, the flowers growing, we're in good shape. I believe every time that she went, it looked like it was the last cup full. And she went back again. That's the faithfulness of God. You know what? You may never see your cupboard full, but there'll be enough. There'll be enough. And, and, and so we find that the Lord God uh, is faithful in very, very small ways. Now, if we, in, in, in man's eyes, and, and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, you know what? We would like to see steaks in the freezer. Uh, you ever get sick of cornbread? Now, I don't, personally. I love it, especially my mother-in-law's. But when I was a kid, I would say sometimes I got burned out. And... Uh, Mama would fix it two ways. Whole cakes or regular cornbread. <coughs> and sometimes when she got on the wild side, she might fix uh, those little, in the corn, looks like corn cobs. And that was it. And you know what? It wasn't much, but God was faithful. It, it was what we needed, not what we wanted, but what we needed. And God is faithful time and time and time <laughs> again. And faithful in the small things is just as much as a miracle as man are raining, raining from heaven. He is faithful in his way, not in our way. Last place we're going to look in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, very familiar verses of Scripture. Matthew 14, uh, the Lord Jesus walking on the sea. Uh, Matthew 14 and verse 25. Matthew 14 and verse 25. Uh, you know the things that led up to this. He left them alone. He deliberately sent them into the eye of the storm. And he went up on the mountain apart to pray. Now, I believe two things he may have prayed for. Number one, he was pray, praying up a big, big storm to be placed directly on his servants. And the other thing I think he was praying for is that their faith would hold. Now, 
He came through with the storm. But what, what did he say to Peter? Oh, thou little faith. You know, isn't it amazing that the natural elements are more obedient than us? Yeah. That storm was surely coming. And Peter's little faith. He crashed. Peter's like me, his crashed more than once. Uh, it did not, it was not sustained. But you know, I believe by the end it had. He he gave up on the Lord Jesus Christ here. He denied him and cussed like a sailor. So I don't know the man. Left him then. But at the end, he was faithful. You know what experiences in your life will do? It will increase your faith. You know what? They come your way to increase your faith. Now let's read very quickly in Matthew 14, verse 25. The Bible says this, In the fourth watch of the night, he waited to the sun just before sunrise, the blackest, darkest part of the night. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came unto them walking on the sea. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to see that? Opposing all the natural things that we can think of and walking across the sea. That's amazing to me. You know what? I don't know. Uh, we'll be so consumed with praise in the, in the kingdom of God that I don't know what will happen, but I sure would like to see him walk on the water again, wouldn't you? That'd be an amazing thing to me. May not happen, but it, it, it's still, even today when I read this text, I'm amazed at the ability of our God. Verse 26, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried with, and they cried out for fear. Now, they were misjudging the situation, were they not? They were taking what was going on around them and coming up with the worst case scenario. Is that not us? Woe is me, boo-hoo. God's got a plan. The Lord's got a plan. And so they thought it was a ghost, and they said that, Oh me, uh, what's out there? Verse 27, but straightway, not immediately, a little while later, but straightway Jesus said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. What did he tell the widow? Fear not. You know what gets uh, you know what gets uh, in problems with us is our fear. Is our fear, and so uh, many times when we fail to realize that God has a plan, the the problem with that is our fear. Then Peter and Peter answered him and said, "Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water." And he said, come. But when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And you would have been too. But remember, the command was fear not. And, he, and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, remember how strong it is, and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You know why we doubt? We forget the faithfulness of God. You know uh, why sometimes we think, oh, it's not going to work out this time. Uh, I'm hungry. Uh, I have, uh, uh, there's nothing in the cupboard. Don't forget the faithfulness of God. He's been, he, he's been there time and time and time again. Do you understand the faithfulness of God? Have you experienced it? Our God is a very, very faithful God. 